I like to take things apart. Uh, <laughs> I was always, um, you know, taking apart telephones, radios, televisions, sort of anything electronic I could get my hands on. Like to kind of see how it worked, and you know, sometimes I'd put them back together too. But I was mostly interested in, in understanding how how things worked. Yeah, I, you know, wanted to see how it worked, so I, I took it apart. And uh, good thing about the early personal computers is that they had completely kind of standardized chips. And so you could literally get a book about each chip and read what each, you know, pin did and how signals were processed through the chip. And you could design your own circuits and you could modify them and you could, you know, literally see exactly how the thing was working. And, you know, that, that was sort of the, the classroom for me. <laughs> that, was, that was where I learned, you know, the, the, the basics of how, how these things work. And then it kind of became fascinated with, well, how could you improve it? How could you make it do more things? How could you expand it? How could you make it go faster? How could you, you know, hook it up to other computers and, you know, sort of let your imagination run wild? When I was in uh, the seventh grade, I was in, a, in a, an advanced math class. And in my math teacher's classroom at the junior high school I went to, they got the first uh, teletype terminal at the school. And this was, of course, before personal computers. And basically, you could like write a program and send it off to a big mainframe. The answer would come back. And I became kind of you know fascinated with this idea of a computing machine. I thought that was pretty cool. And <laughs> so, so I would sort of program the, this, this, uh, this teletype terminal and, you know, sort of learned all I could about computers. My mother was, uh, you know, a, a financial consultant. So she was sort of, you know, immersed in, in the, the world of stocks and bonds. And, you know, I kind of became interested in, uh, you know, currencies and interest rates and you know uh, what was going on with commodity prices and kind of an odd thing for a 13 year old to be doing but but I kind of found it interesting and and um, you know uh, would sort of read reports and you know started playing around and in investing in things and found just found that uh, that whole idea fascinating. When I was 16, I, I got this job working for a newspaper in Houston. And my job was to sell subscriptions to the paper on the telephone. And um, I realized uh, two uh, things when I was doing this. I realized that uh, people that uh, were buying the newspaper generally had two things in common. Either they were moving to a new residence or they were getting married. And uh, it turns out that you could go find information about both of those things in enormous quantities. So in the state that I lived in, in Texas, when you, get, when you want to get a marriage license, you have to file with the state. And it's public information, uh, particularly the address that you want the license sent to once it's issued. So I hired all my friends and went to every county in the surrounding 16 counties in Houston, captured the addresses of all the people that applied for marriage licenses, and sent them a direct mail offer to offer them the, the newspaper for a free trial and then a subscription. And uh, you know, ended up making a, making a fair sum of money for a, for a teenager. This is way back in the beginning of the industry when personal computers didn't even have hard disk drives. And so, you know, we made a business where we would, you know, buy controller chips and cables and write some software and buy hard disks and we would make kits so you could upgrade your computer to have a hard disk drive. So we were making an enormous number of these kits, like hundreds and thousands of these kits. And we needed computers 
to format the hard disk drives. So we kind of designed a really basic computer to format the hard drives. And we're busy formatting hard drives. And I remember we had this customer from Martin Marietta who came to see us and he goes, I want to buy 150 of these hard disk drives. And we're like, oh my God, you know, we don't, we don't have ties. I mean, you know, our office is not really a place you would want to go and see at the time. And so we got to clean the place up. And so I'm showing this guy around and he's going to buy these disk drives, kits. And he goes, what are those computers you have? Oh, those are the computers to uh, format the hard drives. Well, you know, can we buy those? Ah, good idea. You know, we, we, we were so busy formatting these hard drives. We never, we never really thought about that. So about you know, a week later, there was uh, this like Austin computer fair um, in, in the downtown kind of uh, you know, Coliseum type thing. And by that time, we were sort of the biggest seller of computer stuff in Austin. So we had like the biggest booth right in the center. And so we made this computer in a, in a few days and got a case and sort of brought it to the show. When you look at the complete uh, balance of, you know, how fast do our customers pay us? And how fast do we pay our suppliers? And how much inventory do we have? The net of all that is that uh, we actually, you know, collect money, you know, way before, you know, we, we pay the money out. And so, so um, that's, that's a beautiful thing. And in fact, it allows a, a company to grow very quickly because you have sort of negative working capital. And so we didn't, we didn't require lots of capital. We weren't as efficient then as, as we are now, but you know, we were able to grow uh, quite rapidly without a ton of capital. Now we were growing at such enormous rates, we needed some capital because we, we needed some buildings and we, we needed some infrastructure. And so you know, we, we uh, got a little bit of, of capital, we got a credit line, then we eventually did a private placement and went public in 1988. Uh, on NASDAQ and, you know, attracted some capital so we could expand around the world and continue growing. We kind of went off for a few days with uh, some of the really smart people in the company and a few outside advisors and we said, well, what are we going to do with this company? I mean, this thing's really growing fast, but, but you know, we're in a, we're in a, you know, a business that is pretty competitive and expanding rapidly, you know, what do we do? So we, we kind of had uh, three strategies that we uh, clued in on as our, as our growth path for the future. First one we said was, you gotta go outside the US because, you know, 96% uh, of the people in the world live outside the United States and, you know, it's gonna be at least half the opportunities outside the United States and you can't just be a domestic company. Second thing we said was we really want to go after large companies because you know they uh, underwrite their purchase of technology through productivity and they can afford the best tools and that we know is going to be a lucrative opportunity and you know we really want to go after that in a big big way kind of a odd thing for a little company like ours to go after, particularly with IBM and others, you know, in the field. The third thing we said was, you know, uh, differentiating our business is going to be really key. And the way to do that is on service. And uh, you've got to have, you know, better service than a competitor. So we invented this idea of on-site service for the PC, which had really never been done before. And so with those three strategies, we kind of marched forward and and that, you know, that lasted five or six years. In the spring of 86, we went to the Comdex trade show, which was at the time like the biggest trade show in the industry. And we had a 12 megahertz 286 computer. And at the time, uh, the fastest computer from IBM was a six megahertz 286 computer. So ours was twice as fast. Uh, their computer was $39.95, and ours was $19.95. So ours was twice as fast and cost half as much. We didn't have any problem selling them. I mean, you know, 
there was an interesting uh, twist, though. There, there, were, there were two really long lines of people at our booth. There were all the people who said, you know, I'm, I want to run AutoCAD or DBase, and how can I get one of these things really quickly? This is fantastic. And then there were all the press who were kind of wondering, why in the world would anyone ever need a 12 megahertz 286? You know, we already have 6 megahertz, and we know 8 megahertz is coming. Those are plenty fast, okay? You know, <laughs> compared to today, of course, uh, you know, children's toys uh, are fast, have faster microprocessors than the machines we were selling then. The way this would work is, is uh, you know, let's say you went to computer land. There used to be such things in the United States and, and around every street corner. And you bought a computer and it didn't work. Well, you'd, you'd put it back in the car and you'd go there and fix this thing and you'd come back, you know, a week or so later and they'd give it to you. So our idea was that you'd call us on the phone and say, hey, my computer's not working. And we'd come the very next day and fix it. And... Um, you know, that, 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 you know, it turns out there were all sorts of third-party uh, companies that had field service networks, companies like Xerox, for example, who had all these technicians all over the country who were kind of waiting for copiers to fail, you know, and so they had this fixed capacity. And so we could buy up that, that excess capacity at w way less cost than we could put it in ourselves and instantly have, you know, way better service. And actually Xerox is the company we... Uh, we we uh, we use for quite some time in that in that. When a customer would call us and say, "Hey, you know something's wrong with my computer," the interesting thing is that about eighty-five or ninety percent of the time, we could solve that problem actually right on the phone. So we didn't actually have to send the, the technician. But when we did, we kind of knew exactly what the problem was, you know, was, and we could very accurately sort of fix it the very next day. And then we've obviously advanced it. Now we have two-hour service and four-hour service, you know, for, for kind of mission-critical installations. And some, some of our customers say, hey, I want to have somebody like there all the time for 24 by 7, do that too. So it, it becomes, uh, you know, many, many different types of service offerings. Services is a really important part of our business that continues to evolve uh, particularly as, you know, we create more and more, and more complicated products, the customer isn't so much interested in all the bits and bytes and how fast is the computer and what does it do. They want to know that, you know, this installation of a critical system that they're putting inside their business is really going to work well. So they're looking for a solution. And so we have to know a lot about their business and we have to really be able to, you know, consult with them and tailor a solution that, you know, meets their needs. I think you have to be able to experiment and, and make mistakes. Uh, and, you know, I find the question a bit perplexing in the sense that you know, uh, if, if, you, if you really don't know, you know, what, what, what it means to be an entrepreneur, you know, maybe you aren't one, you know, so, so I, I think there's a, a bit of kind of self-initiative uh, and self-starter, you know, that, that is incredibly important part of, of entrepreneurship. I mean, no one can sort of tell you how to do it. You have to sort of have an instinctual, uh, you know, feeling or an idea about, about something. And you got to be passionate about it. I mean, I think people that look for great ideas to make money, uh, you know, aren't nearly as, as successful as those who say, okay, what do I really love to do? What am I excited about? What do I know something about? You know, what's kind of interesting and compelling?